but the reason I started macro to go very tactical on you is because I know I don't want to sell VaynerMedia, I don't have to maximize the EBITDA of the business. I don't need to maximize the profit of VaynerMedia year in, year out because I'm not selling it. So I never have the worry that somebody's gonna swoop in and offer me money for my business and then when I look at the bottom line, I wanna make sure the profit's real good for that sale. I never have to spend a year or two setting it up for the sale. I, just to get everybody grounded, have decided to build the best marketing machine. I always call it the comms and marketing death star, except with the little, without the little flaw that Luke fucking shot and whatever, you know, I don't want it to go away. So like, I wanna build the greatest marketing machine of all time and in my 50s, 60s and 70s, I wanna buy very big businesses like Reebok or Yahoo Chocolate Drink or Gymboree, like big businesses that you know and I wanna buy them and run them through the machine, buy them for 408 million, sell them for 3.7 billion, right? Like that's why I'm doing it. So again, I'm giving a long-winded answer because we got some time together. Now you know why I have a chief heart officer and why Claude's the most important person. I spend all my time on HR, either thinking about it or spending time with my employees because it's family. If I was gonna sell it in four years, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend all my time with my employees. You know, a lot of times people are like, Gary, you're the best chief, you know, somebody like you really knows my shit. I've hired a chief heart officer and I'm gonna spend all my time on HR and I'm like, well, what are you doing? They're like, oh, I'm gonna build this up and sell it in two years. I'm like, you shouldn't spend any time with anybody. You need to maximize profits and lower costs and like, you probably want people quitting to lower, like, like you want attrition. So, you know, what I've done my whole career is I realize people are the variable of success. There's way too much ego in business. Like humility and empathy are your secret powers. Everybody wants to be the man, be the guy, be the gal, be the one, be the girl. Like everybody wants to be that person and I just basically every morning wake up and know that I work for everybody and nobody works for me as the CEO. You know how many people here struggle with expecting people that work for them to work as hard as them? <laughs> I mean, just ludicrous, ludicrous audacity at best and straight fucking assholishness at worst, right? So like, I think about this shit every day. Like, you know, for me, it's people-centric. You know, like, people are always like, I can't get my cashiers to like fucking work because they're only 12 bucks an hour. I'm like, no, it's because you've never said hello to them, dick face. Right? So like, I'm very people-centric. I think there's enormous ROI, either in the short term or the long term. Some of the people that work for me, Iris may go on to win an Academy Award as a filmmaker, right? Like, I'd much rather have her like me than not like me. You know, and everybody's playing short term. I don't live as if tomorrow I'm gonna die and I'm stunned by how many people do. It's all short term ROI. Every decision is short term ROI. And I think that's a huge decision. So internally, I spend a lot of time and money. My HR department, too big. My time that I spend with employees, too much. This is what I hear from all my business associates who then spend all their time asking me how I do it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a big culture guy. I, I agree with you. Like, my intuition is that 94% of this room is not culture oriented. They're money oriented. It's just the way it is. It's not because of this room. It's because of every room of every business conversation in the world. And, uh, and in that arbitrage, I'm gonna build a huge legacy and buy the New York Jets. And so I think that everybody here should take a step back and realize what actually drives their business. So I interview all my senior people. I spend an enormous amount of time telling them they'll get fired if they don't play nice with the other boys and girls. The number one flaw that a lot of people have in their company right now is their biggest money maker is also their biggest asshole and they're letting them get away with it because of the money making that's creating massive cancer internally within organizations right now. They should all be the best at it. The reason I'm so good, it's one of the biggest reasons I still be Gary V is because I want to be the best at social media so that I'm never at the mercy of any of my employees. I've never had an employee that's had any significant leverage against me ever in the history of my career. And you know, which is, I've never even had a sales team that's been bonused on sales. Like, I've just never put myself in a position to be at the mercy of somebody. And I think a lot of people do that, so it's something to think about. Um, and then finally, you have to know what they care about. One of my best people that runs Facebook ads still works for me because I bought him St. Louis Cardinals tickets because I knew he was a St. Louis Cardinals fan. 
and it meant so much to him that he's passed up Facebook and Google offering him fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year more in salary because he feels good about me. So some people trade on money, which is great. If, by the way, I wish every one of my employees traded on money. It'd be simple. How much do you want? Good, I can do that. How much do you want? Can't do that. How much do you want? I can do that. Like, that's easy. The problem is a lot of your employees work on work-life balance. A lot of your employees completely trade on you just acknowledging them. I mean, I, mean, I can't wrap my head around what's actually going on in the world. Like, how are you an owner and not saying hello to you? Like, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> so that's how I feel. It's really how I feel. I watch it. I watch managers and owners. That's the reason so many people struggle with going to management. When they were Indians, it was fun to make fun of the chiefs. But when you become a chief, it's hard, right? It's a whole different game. What got you to management is nothing what gets you to the next place. You're the ultimate manager if you own your shit. You only work for everybody else. The customer, your employees, for me it's my employees first, then the customer, then I can even begin to think about what the fuck's in it for me. And I've just watched 95% of the businesses I interact with. Start with them, then the customer, then their employees. I think that most of the people are broken and I think if you have, if you are, if you're honest, no bullshit, right? If it just went through your mind like fuck, I am me, then customer, then my employees, you will lose. And I can tell you that's the majority of businesses. So anything else I can add? Because I know you want a detail and I went macro. I'd like to close some gap. Uh, yeah, I mean that was awesome as always. I was just thinking like tactically, like what is like one thing that I should do or not do? How many employees do you have, if any? Nine. None? Nine. Nine. You should talk to them and ask them what they give a fuck about. When's the last time, tell me the truth, don't lie in front of these people. Yeah, When's the last time? <laughs> When's the last time you've literally sat down with all nine of them for 45 minutes over breakfast, lunch, or dinner and said, what are the biggest things that you're interested in for me to do? Well, I mean, he calls me at midnight to ask me about other things and what's <laughs> going on, so fairly often. And the, and the other eight too? I'm sorry? And the other eight as well? No, sir. That's it, my man. I love, and I, first of all, thank you for your honesty. And number, listen, you might have, you, it seems like you're deep in my content. You probably heard me recently say, I'm fucking up too. I think this open door policy is working. It's not working for shit. So next year, I'm spending fucking redoing my whole schedule. I've canceled, I'm not speaking at all next year. I'm like doing like six events compared to 40, just so I have the more of the man hours to now force every one of my 750 people to see me for 15 minutes every six months. So you have, you have eight and other employees. You've got to fuck it. You should be done this week. <laughs> and, and here's how it goes, Daniel. Karen, Rick, Susan, the fuck do you want from me? What can I do for you? You may find that she wants to leave early on Fridays because she's missing recitals and that changes her whole life. That she'll dominate for you Monday through Friday and a half just for those two hours. Or maybe somebody doesn't like the way you're talking to them. And so the number one thing I do tactically is not only do I sit down with them for 15 minutes, I'll spend the first 11 minutes getting them comfortable with telling me the truth. And then I'll follow up with a text with an emoji in it and then I'll watch what they do on social media and then I pay attention to who they're friends with. I'm f- like, I'm a full-time listener. Everybody thinks I talk all the time. All I'm doing is listening. The biggest reason I talk so much is to get reactions from you, whether one-on-one, you in an audience like this, or the whole fucking world when I do content, I talk so much strategically to get reactions so I can listen, so I can readjust. You know, it's fun when I talk to anything that even remotely touches martial arts, because I didn't realize this because I didn't know anything about it. Like, I'm all reactionary. I'm all that. That's what I, I'm a counterpuncher. I want, I'm doing things to force you into a move so I can then do the next move. It's chess. I just do it with communication. I even think that my personality, in hindsight, has developed into this caricature of who I am to create the natural reaction because I'm able to judge people very quickly based on how they react to me. I give away all my best shit. If I was selling my audience, I would give away all my best shit and then what I would sell is access. Unscalable stuff. Because if you're giving away bullshit or stuff that's just not that strong, you're never gonna get them into the interest graph to begin with. The other thing is way too many people think they're sitting on something that means something. 
information is commoditized. People want to sell information. I make fun of all my friends who think they're gonna make a $97 ebook. I'm like, bro, I'm like, cool, but do you feel good about selling somebody $97 worth of shit that you just control copied from the internet? So I think you hold on to something that is not scalable. So I think access is not scalable. Your time is not scalable. I think the best model is to sell something that is not scalable, that's hard for you as the individual to scale, but then you can maximize it, right? Like, you know, I mean, the amount of money people offer me to spend an hour with me, it just like, like, the emails I get are so crazy. I mean, there's people that are taking so, I had some guy send me $100,000 in my PayPal. Just like sent these, like one hour. I couldn't take it, I just gave it to him for free, but like, what, what it told me was, fuck, this is so right. This is so right. So for all the people that are trying to sell and do all these things, like, you know, like, doing the right thing is always the right thing. So what do you hold on to? Something that isn't scalable. What do you give away? The best shit you got. Which is. So you'll have, like, you give away, I know you've done hundreds of hours of podcasts, or, you know, videos, and just tons and tons of videos. So there's, it's very difficult for people to go back and see all of this. So. They'll they'll hear bits and pieces. The the notion of the curated content as a packaged product is a fair debate because time is valuable. And so for the people that are really stuck who don't want to sell their time or don't want to go with my model, I think the one thing that is a worthwhile debate is if you curate all your stuff in one. It's kind of how I think of a book, right? Like yours for 13 bucks all of the last year and a half in one place. So, you know, listen, I'm I'm not God. You should live, here's my number one piece of advice. If you feel great about what you sell, sell whatever the fuck you want, right? But make sure you're not feeling great because of the selfish needs for the financial impact on your life. Make sure you feel great because you've looked at everything else that they could spend their money on and will it really work?